Greetings from Chicagoland. You're listening to Munira's Musings, where your host Munira will showcase new guests each week to share exciting details about the journey to their niches. As we like to say, the riches are in the niches. And on this show, we'll share ideas on how to break through our invisible boundaries so we can start taking steps towards our dreams and create the life that we most desire. If you're passionate about impacting lives, then this podcast will give you some great ideas and equip you with the tools to quickly grow your business. Okay, let's get started with today's show. Here's your host, Munira. Greetings from Chicagoland. This is Munira with Munira's Musings. Hello and welcome to another edition. We are talking about Cialdini's seven principles, including... um, Unity, which is the topic of today. My guest and my co-host with this program is Krishna G. Hi, Krishna. <laughs> I'm very happy to have you in this session. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. So we've started this segment because we wanted to talk to you about Chaldini's book, Influence. And we did several series already. In the first series, we already talked about Cialdini and why he started this course. Um, and he wrote this book. And what was the purpose behind that? The second principle, we did reciprocity and why reciprocity is important. You have to give. You feel compelled to give somebody something if they have given you something. And that was the whole discussion you can scroll down into my facebook to see the uh, to see the past episodes and then last week we talked about the liking principle and why that was important and why people should like you before they trust you and then they buy from you and in our business so we are trying to help you all entrepreneurs that are watching to in to take these principles and infuse them into your business, right? So today's principle is unity. And why is unity such a big, important thing? Now, when I first started working with Cialdini and learning and getting certified, I noticed that there were several of us, there's several hundred of us that are doing the same thing and we all are getting certified and we're all trying to help our business and infuse this in and flavorize our business with this. But one thing that really took my fancy was Krishna G. Now, Krishna G, his last name is Godridge, right? Am I right? Right. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, in India, anytime you, you respect somebody, you call them G. It's like Mr. But so Krishna, Krishna G, right, uh, has a last name that's G as in God, Godridge, and then he also goes by Krishna G. So you know it's a it's a pun on words, but the fact that it is respect that we're giving him. So when I say Krishna G, I meant with respect, not just using his initial as G, but you know it works two ways. So that was a unity principle, the fact that. Unity means to belong, right? So both of us have sales history background. Both of us are in two different continents, but all both of us are also practitioners of the child in the principle. So that's what brings us together. And that's the unity principle. Now let's talk a little bit more and dive into it. So Krishnaji, you're a sales professional um, and you worked with Big Pharma. You worked with several businesses. So tell us how you have used in Unity Principle in your business. Oh, that's a fantastic question. I think the best introduction also you gave about Unity Principle as well. But when I say Unity Principle, it is about Venus that we create. We belong to a particular thing is what we are saying. It could be anything, it could be culture, it could be regional, it could be about same profession, it could be environment and anything. But when I come to sales profession, what we do when we are communicating with them is that the first thing that we have to relate is that 
I also belong to your community. And that's where when you say about something about localism can be taken up. Like when you said you have a connection with India to me, I immediately connected to you. And that's how when I say somebody who is covering from any other place, we say, oh, we both are in sales. We both are from, you are from India, I am from India. We get connected on that. You are from Chialdini Institute, I am from Chialdini Institute. The first one is you connect something on the locally, at the regional level, or the anything at the cultural level. And that connects there. Now, when I come to sales go or something, the first thing which I say is that you are interested in developing your people. I am also interested in developing your sales team. I think this is the best fit but that both of us can work towards one common cause. And that's a, such a very nice platform for people to build up relationship and they understand that we both are talking about similar things. So, so that's one thing. So you find the common ground, right? So we talked about yeah. this in, in the like, 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 um, uh, the like, principle, the like principle. principle yeah. I'm sorry, the liking yeah. principle. We talked about that, and we said that you have to find common ground. So, what is the difference between unity and liking, and why is it a different principle? Couldn't he have just merged one this into one? Ah, that's a good question. That's a good question. If you look at uh, what is the difference between the unity and the liking is liking is we say yes to people who are similar to us. But unity is about we say yes to people who belong to us. There is a difference between a fine difference. One is about what we are saying is we are similar to you, but the other one is you belong to us. You are from India, I'm from India, so you belong to India. <clears throat> right? That's the difference. And you worked in pharma industry, I worked in pharma industry. We belong to each other. Right? Right. And that's the best part which works out. So belonging, right? So why is this principle the, the unity principle. Now we are talking to entrepreneurs and there are people out there who are trying to become entrepreneurs. So let's Let's just try and see how they can, if they are just trying their own business, they're solopreneurs, they're not in business with the big pharma or big companies. How can they take this principle and use it in their own business? Because what are they trying to find? If they're looking for clients, everybody's looking for clients right now. So how can they take the unity principle and then use it as common ground in their business? I think the best part, any individual who is trying to use this principle is on being saying that, where is my relationship with the client? Okay, if you put the two circles on this, is it these circles are too divided or is it close or is it too close? Is something that they have to decide. And now, once you know where is your relationship level, we all know that the best way to increase your relationship is by using a word called as co-creation is what we are talking about. When I say co-creation, it is nothing that I am saying right or you are saying right. We both will work together to achieve something like that. Okay, please share your thoughts and our minds. And that one word that we co-create something together itself will bring in a lot of relationship and a lot of interaction. So this is how I say you can use the word. We would like to co-create what you require. And that brings a wonderful thing to them. Go ahead. So it, it, is co-creation like collaboration then? Yeah, it's, it's a kind of collaboration. But when you say collaboration, we're both working on this. And co-creation is I take your inputs and you take your input. Today, in fact, I was having a negotiation with uh, somebody. I said, uh, you have proposed something and uh, we want something. I said, I use the same word and say, uh, let's both of us work together and create this proposal in such a way which both of us will get benefit. And let's understand each other what is that you want. And the moment when I used this word, there was a quick reaction from the other person and say, yeah, that's wonderful. I would like to share what is our concern to you. And I said, okay, wonderful. Let me share what is my concern to you. And let's come to your mutual agreement is what I said. 
Okay, so so contract negotiation that you can use this principle in contract negotiation because sometimes oh. as as um, business printers, when we send out a contract, the this, this opposite party or the person we are sending it to always thinks, oh my God, this is not something I can do. And then they, they, they step back and they don't take action. But in this way, co-creation co is let's come to a common ground where we can figure it out so both parties are happy. Now, we are talking about this. It looks simple. But does this really happen in the corporate world? Who is doing this? Oh, yeah, that's very good. Uh, the first one in any business, if you want to, this principle of unity is for relationship is what we are talking about. If you see whether it is family, whether it is business, whether it is anywhere, whatever you speak, the relationship will increase only when you have increased number of interactions with the other person. Right? I'm sure many times you expect a business of $1,000 or $2,000 to happen in one interaction. No, it's not going to happen unless you have built up a relationship. So during the process of the sales, whatever you're doing, wherever it is at, how do you increase your number of interaction with the customer? That itself will actually help you to build up relations. And the moment when you use co-creation, there will be number of interactions which will improve on that. And that's the best one which you can first thing is this. Now you asked another question, how does it work in the corporate world? If there is a project which is there, you can always say, we have a team of people who are going to work together to co-create something which is beautiful, right? And the moment you say that, who are the team members, you can make a small team and say, and that team is dedicated to you is what you can say. And in the same way, you can also tell them, I would be very happy from your team, along with you, who else is involved in today? So we team as a six people can work and come up with something fascinating for you. And that's how you can say that, which will motivate people to come to work. Okay, so we talked about reciprocity. We talked about liking. We talked about unity. So help me understand how each, each pillar, this is a pillar in each of, uh, each of this is a pillar in Chaldini's influence, right? How do you take these three principles and work together, make it work together? Because now we are creating, we have the ingredients and I'm thinking of it like baking a cake. We have the flour, we have the eggs, we have the milk, we have the coloring, we have the sugar, butter and everything. So these are all different things. But how can we take these three principles and make something out of it? Oh, that's a very good, that's a very good question. You know, uh, let's take a scenario on a situation. Let's say two businesses, whether it is small or big business, whatever it is there. One side is the sales side, one side is the buyer side, which is there. I imagine you have done over a period of time, let's say one year, two year, and that business relationship is not very good one, okay? and they strain the relationship over a period of time. Now, how do you use these three principles? The first principle is about reciprocity. I think the anywhere if you get stuck, I think you use the principle of reciprocity, give something to the other people without expecting something. But if you don't give anything, you don't expect anything. But the first one is give something. It could be of anything, it could be a valuable advice, as we talked in the first one about intangible things also, you can give it to as this. Now, once you start this, there is some moment which is there. The next one, the principle comes as liking. Where you start genuinely like about each other and say, how do we actually, I mean, first thing is to go to like the other person and say, I'm genuinely interested in you so that you give a comfort level. And you also compliment them for what they've done. You know, Monero, many times in our business life, we don't appreciate people at all. I think find out ways and means where you can appreciate people on that. That's where you start talking about the liking. 
Now, the third thing what we are talking about, unity principle here is, you clearly said in the meetings that we both are working for one objective, that is to help the customer. Now, can we look at something where we both can co-create? Why we are talking about mine or yours? Let's talk about something on, let's take a small project. And if you are a little more bigger organization, have a team between accounts to account and say, you both of you co-create something which is solving your problem. Sales, we both can create something which is good for the customer. Design, we both can create something which can be of good for the customer. And always find out ways to increase your number of interactions. Okay, how many times you have an off me, I mean, when I say off the work, when I say dinner, having a nice dinner with the team itself is a fantastic bonding which brings us, right? And imagine in a simple way, Bonita, I say, if both the teams can work on a common theme, common logo, which will actually help, that brings the Venus amount. This is how I say how these three principles can be used for building or repairing a relationship that has point or you create a new relationship altogether as well. So it's not only about building, it's also about repairing a relationship also it can become. Okay, so you've given us a good idea about how to blend these principles in our business. You yeah. talked about the liking principle and the reciprocity. So most people are going to say, "How? why do I need to do this? Why, why do I need to include these principles into my business? I mean, I'm doing business, am I not? And I'm looking for clients. But give me a reason for the why. Oh, I think the first one is the uh, CE relationship is always a fragile one. Okay, you never know when it breaks, when it actually builds on that. The first one is to assess where is your relationship today on a scale of one to 10. And see, you can't say everything is 10. No, I don't think that is the best relationship to happen, but it does not happen with many customers. But you first measure what is your relationship currently and look at where are the vulnerability which is there which can break this relationship that's the first one or if you are building a new customer understand where is your relationship and build this as well first is to assess then to take some measures on which principle can work in your situation there and you can use all the three principles to build this relationship and then take few simple actions three, four things that you can do. It could be online, offline. How do you communicate this principle in a nice way? To do? And then you implement this and see again and measure and see how do you, you are able to increase your relationship with the customer. And that's the first one we are talking about. And then next time we are going to talk about the other things as well. But you know, Monira, as I was talking to you, one of the best way, one of the best way, what I say that People move away from you if you use force, if you use hierarchy, if you use manipulative techniques. But what we are talking is how do you make ethically to people to come towards you without any negative reaction and build positive learning. I give one very good suggestion to everybody, whoever is listening, and you apply this today itself, wherever you go, it is going to give you a remarkable thing. When you send a proposal, when you send a proposal, when you make a request or when you do anything, you always ask for an opinion. To be. The moment when you ask for an opinion, people have to think and they go backwards on that. And that's how you'll also hear many times in the sales conversation, people will say, I will get back to you. That means that they have gone back. Okay, but the next is, Next time when you do anything, instead of asking opinion, you use the word, what is an advice for us on the next step? And the people will actually move. Hide us from today, what's your advice, what's your suggestion or something, then the people will Yeah. 
So you're saying that don't ask for advice, ask for opinion. And that's when people... Uh, no, no, I said that it was don't ask for opinion, but ask for the advice. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. So ask for the <laughs> advice and not ask for opinion. So that's a very good idea. I mean, wow. I'm going to try that and see. Because we always are not sure what we are doing sometimes. We are always looking for credibility people who are going to look at us and say, hey, she's doing this. How can we step into this market or whatever? So if we ask for advice, then I think people are feeling more inclined to talk to us. I like that idea. So let's go try that. And so, you know, the, it's so sad that this segment is, we could go on for hours, but Time is of a factor and we have to stop here. So ladies and gentlemen, you've heard about the unity principle and like reciprocate, like and unite people. And the fact that we are a sense of belonging. So here I'm talking to you as an entrepreneur, you are my entrepreneurs. So we belong to this group of adventurers who are trying to step into the world and make a name for ourselves. And if you're one of them, then you are in a group that I belong to. So we belong together. And why not help each other, right? And there was one place where I said, why can't we help each other grow our businesses? So I'm going to put my uh, LinkedIn um, link in there. If you guys have a LinkedIn profile, connect with me, right? And we can help each other to so get more views. So that's one thing. That's also the fact that you like my messages here that we are doing, and then you can connect with us. Now, one thing that we also want to do is, this is just a taste of what Chaldini's course can do for you. This course can take you to the next level. Now, if you're interested in learning more, we have, we're have going to have a course coming up soon in the next few weeks. We still have a few more uh, pillars to go through the Chaldini's, but there is going to come be a course that we can teach with you, or you can be a Chaldini practitioner. If you want more information on this, go ahead and connect with either me or Krishna G, and he can we can help you figure it out and get into the certification, and then you can be a Chaldini practitioner. So with that, if you like this segment, I know you do because you're still listening. If you like this segment, go ahead and give us more uh, your opinions, your comments on what it is that you want to hear more from. Because the next thing we are going to do is we're going to offer you a course. And if you are more than welcome to try it with us or become a practitioner. And if you're interested, just connect with us. We'll share that with you. We've already said that. Krishnaji, any last words? Yeah, uh, the part of our reciprocity to our audience who have shown interest here, we would like to offer to them that if they have a landing page or a website, we would like to give an audit report to them. But it's only for the first five people who comment on Monero's Facebook. And then click on their website and we'll give an audit report. To them. So are those people supposed to give you the website name also? Yeah, if they comment, then we can connect with them and get the website, and then okay. we can definitely see that. And if there's going to be a report that we give, and no obligation, it's purely fantastic, fabulous report. Okay, so there you go. Krishna Ji is giving you a free call. audit for audit, audit for their website and right. the strategy. Because you know, you may be missing something, or you have a very fantastic website. Yeah. But if there is something, go ahead. We can tell you what you can improve on and get more SEO likes. I think that's what yeah. it is. All right. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, until next time, we will talk about the authority principle next week. So, if you are ready, let's see and make you an authority in your realm of business. Until next week, we'll see you. Have a good week. Bye, Krishnaji. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Munira's Musings. We hope that you found today's conversation inspiring and useful so that you can continue making progress towards mastering your own niche. Please tune in next week for another episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media at Munira's Musings on Facebook, 
and leave us a review wherever you're listening to podcasts. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.